Hey everyone, I'm Mike Holmes Jr. and this is Homes at Home. So we've been doing this a lot this year and in case you're tuning in for the first time, we've been doing this since the pandemic happened. So we're gonna talk about everything we've been working on at home, uh, some of our favorite projects. And I have a very special guest today, uh, Darren Keith. He's a host of um, Extreme Home, or sorry, Extreme Makeover Home Edition, uh, DIY expert, designer, welder, and so much more. Uh, but first, before we get into that, I want to start by talking a little bit about this year. It's been a wild year for everyone involved, but uh, I'm sure, like most of you, it's been a good time to get projects done at home. Uh, some of the projects we've been working on, my wife, Lisa Marie, and myself are you know, building our raised garden beds. So for those of you who haven't seen it, we did a, a series on Instagram uh, where we did our raised garden beds from start to finish. We built them out of stone. We had tons of fun building it. And if you haven't checked it out, head over to my Instagram, Mike Holmes Jr., uh, and check it out. Uh, let's start off with some questions, and uh, then we can jump into our special guest. Linda, is duct cleaning a real thing? My house is always super dusty. I could dust every day. Would duct cleaning help? I always thought it was a farce. Our home is heated with natural gas. So Linda, you're actually dusting every day, probably because your ducts are filthy. So yes, duct cleaning is a real thing. I highly recommend uh, getting a reputable company in your area. Uh, much like any contractor, you're going to want to try and get a couple different references. And uh, word of mouth always helps to find a good company uh, to get to come in and clean your ducts. Hey, Carolyn, welcome. All right, let's see. Terry, what is the name of the orange product you use in the showers under the tile and mud? The orange product is Schluter. So the, the, the product that Schluter makes that you're probably talking about is Ditra. So Ditra is an uncoupling membrane. And what that means is that it actually allows your, your tile to expand and contract at a different rate than your subfloor because there are different materials they're going to expand and contract differently, which normally uh, we would bond tile to the subfloor and they would crack because again, they expand and contract at different rates. So Dietra helps with that, helps with expensive tile lasting a lot longer and also it's a waterproof membrane. So it keeps mold out of the equation and that's exactly what we want in our home. Brenda, when's the show coming back? We're working on that. We're working on that. I mean, obviously, it's been an interesting year and it slowed some things down, but uh, you know, we're still pumping through it. Rita, how do you know if a wall is a bearing wall? I want to remove it, but my husband is afraid the house will collapse. Uh, so, Rita, you should be afraid. And please, for everyone watching this, do not tackle load bearing walls. Do not tackle uh, taking down walls in your home, period. I mean, there's engineers that are involved in this. There's permits that are involved. There are trained professional contractors that are involved in actually doing this and, and making sure that this happens seamlessly and smoothly so that your house doesn't collapse. So this is not a DIY job. This is not a do it yourself. Do not start taking down walls that you don't know if they're load bearing or not. Um, next up, now that we've got some questions out of the way, Darren Keefe is going to join us. So let's welcome Darren. Hey, how you doing? Doing well, Darren. How about yourself? I'm good. I just hope that you got to Rita before her um, <laughs> husband took down the wall. Yeah, no you know, kidding. You never know. They could be under a house right now. <laughs> <laughs> you and I might have to go uh, do an extreme renovation and help them out, eh? Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, Darren, you uh, you recently did uh, Extreme Makeover Home Edition. I'm trying to say that right. Uh, I know. It's and a mouthful. Yeah, I did. Yeah, we just uh, completed it last year, end of last year. So, it was a lot of fun. And, and on the show, you're a host as well as Carpenter, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, host, uh, you know, Jesse Tyler Ferguson really takes on the role of, of the host. And mm -hmm. then uh, the three of us, uh, Brigham Jane and Carrie Lachlan and I are fortunate enough to kind of uh, uh, bring up the back end of it and uh, you know, interact with the families. Right. Well, it takes a village, uh, as yeah. I know, because we're a family run business and there's, you know, there's multiple hosts of us. And, and so I know what you mean. Yes, yes, yes. N yeah. Now, what got you into the television business? Because, you know, I, I just started following you on Instagram recently and I've been, you know, I've been creeping you. I've been going down the uh, all your <laughs> pictures and I love what you do, man. I love your woodworking. You seem very talented. You love to dance. I love that. Hey, man, you know, whatever breaks up the day. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, I moved out to Los Angeles in 1998 to pursue a career in the entertainment business. I was an actor and um, I was fortunate to work on some television shows. I did Sons of Anarchy and Lie to Me and Lost. And um, 
one way or another, I actually uh, kind of fell into carpentry along the way. I'd worked for a GC um, in my teenage years in Ohio and uh, kind of circled back to it um, in my um, early 30s and um, mm -hmm. really fell in love with it again. Uh, more importantly, design. So that's really kind of how I, I fell into it. Yeah, that's awesome. And and it's funny you talk about that because I've noticed your your builds are, are very uh, design savvy. Like they're very unique. They're very you, uh, I'm guessing, because you don't see a lot of style like that out there, which I like. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah, it's important to me to kind of, um, you know, take my own road and, and own approach. Um, obviously, I think, you know, we find inspiration from all kinds of things, uh, whether it's, you know, a, a line or, you know, shape that I see out in, in the urban atmosphere or wherever I might see it, or, or, you know, maybe I see a design that I really love and I'm able to build on that. So, right. Now, yeah. what's your favorite part of carpentry? Is it, is it building tables? Is it joinery? Is it, is it design? Like you're saying? I think it's design, but I think it's a mixed bag of everything. You know, um, I think, you know, as, as you know, there's uh, some meditation in carpentry. Um, you know, it's, it's that alone time, um, that you get with yourself and you get to kind of dig in and, and create and, um, and shape the wood and or steel, if that's what you're working with. And, uh, that I'm really passionate about that. And I get a lot of enjoyment out of it. Right. Yeah. It's funny. I was talking to a friend recently and he said, you know, I've built a few things for my partner and I, I found between renovations and woodworking, there's a very big difference. And that difference is that I feel very Zen. I feel very relaxed when doing woodworking. And yes. I find the same thing is that when I'm in my wood shop, it's just like, I'm, I'm meditating. It's a meditative state. So actually there's a picture I was, I made a oh. uh, su Sushujiban uh, mantle. Have you ever done that? I have not done that. Um, I, I had a friend in, in LA, he went through a period of doing that for all his pieces and he, he made a giant mess uh, in his garage, as you know, very messy. Yeah. but, but the, the, uh, the projects came out beautiful. Uh, I'd love to see, I, I got to research that and take a look at some of your work. Cause, um, I really love that medium. It's very, very pretty. Yeah. It's, it's a really cool Japanese technique that they use to actually treat the wood and they use a lot of it on the exterior of homes that actually, it hardens it and, um, it preserves the wood. So yeah. you take a torch to it, you scrape it off, and then we used a linseed oil to finish it after. And it, I mean, making it sound a lot easier than it was, but you know, don't play with fire. Obviously, Darren, you can do it. You're a professional, but <laughs> you know, for the folks at home, be careful what you're doing. And be careful with the linseed too. I've, yeah, had, some, yeah. I've had some close calls with linseed. Uh, oh, really? Oh yeah, man. You can't leave that stuff on a rag. Um, you know, for those of you at home, if you're treating something with linseed and you leave it on a rag, uh, make sure you dispose of it properly because it, it is an accelerant and it can catch fire as yeah. I've learned. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. So yeah. you had to learn that the hard way. I did. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Ugh, that's tough. Um, yeah. Have you had any projects lately that really stick out? Like any of your favorite projects that you, you want to talk about? Um, you know, I built a farmhouse table for a buddy of mine uh, who had actually moved from Ohio uh, to Los Angeles right before I left. It was kind of like my last project in LA. Um, I, by the way, I'm currently in Charleston, South Carolina. I made a move from Los Angeles to uh, South Carolina. Um, and, uh, you know, it was just fun. I, I did a, I did kind of, you know, an, an, an X um, set up with it. And it was, it was a lot of fun doing those lap joints and um, kind of an easy project, but uh, right. really great reclaimed wood. And it came out really nice. Nice. Now I think the pictures we had up there, I, we pulled up the, the wrong ones, but that's all right. We'll get, we'll get oh, yeah. to it. But um South Carolina. So you went from LA to South to where was it? I'm in Charleston, South Carolina. This is this Charleston. Is day one. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That that is really. And how are you liking it? I mean, it's it's gorgeous here. I've I've uh, I've I've been blessed to be able to visit here a couple times, and I kind of knew it was a place that I wanted to to land. Um, so you know, I had a great time in Los Angeles. It's a great city, full of a lot of uh, things to do, but it was just time to make a change. And, and um, I have some op opportunities out here. I'm going to be working with a builder who specializes in uh, older homes, uh, you nice. know, built in the 1800s. So that's really exciting for me to, to renovate those guys and, you know, see some of that hand hewn timber. Um, yeah. So will be involved in those projects. So. Well, yeah. since you, you're going to be having, there's that, is that the table you're referring to? No, that's, a, that's a desk I actually did. That's a mid century modern, um, desk I did. I was trying to, I was inspired by the old school desks that, you know, yeah. we sat behind as kids and I kind of wanted to take a different spin on it. Oh, it's a beautiful job. 
Yeah, thank you. Yeah, well, since you're working on century homes, my wife and I did buy a century home a few years back, and now we're living here full time. So maybe once you know working on with that crew, maybe you can work your way up and give me a hand working on mine when you're done. I would love to, man. I'm like, yeah. Oh, there's the table. That's it. That's oh, the one. Yeah. Beautiful. So simple design, but very fun. And you know, the great thing about reclaimed, and I know reclaimed is kind of starting to phase out, but you know, mm -hmm. you get so much um, uh, character out of those tables uh, just just by using the reclaimed wood. Absolutely, you do. And I I built a similar table out of uh, black walnut. Uh, I've done black walnut's my favorite type of wood to work with. Oh, it's gorgeous. That, oh, wow. yeah. So that's. That's that was my first table that actually got me into woodworking. So similar to what you were saying is the you know I noticed you had breadboard ends on yours. Yes, and yeah. all that is very difficult to tackle when you when it's I don't know about you when I just got into it you know trying to figure out okay we've got to put the dowels and the breadboard ends to help pull everything together and right, then right. I remember spending nearly a day prepping a breadboard end and then leaving and coming back the next day and seeing it completely cupped and twisted. And having to start from scratch, I was like, wow, this is working with wood is is so different than what I'm used to. Well, first of all, that design, that picture that you just showed me is amazing. I'm not going to show you my first design because <laughs> I, I would embarrass myself. Um, oh, thanks, but man. also, yeah, you're 100 percent right. You know, I'm still learning about how how wood moves. And, you know, now I've got to keep in mind uh, being in Charleston, it's a, obviously a higher humidity and uh, what yeah. that does to the wood. So I'm going to be learning all over again coming from a dry climate, um, you know, to here. And uh, I'm sure I'm going to face a lot of that, that same thing that, you know, the wood twisting and bending. And especially when you're doing breadboard ends, you know, um, you, you got the grains butting it up against each other in different ways. And yeah. um, you got to you gotta leave room for it to move. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, but that's the fun part about it, right? It yes. is finding out, you know, all the different tricks and techniques. I swear, every build I do, I find out something else. But my, the one build I'd love to talk about is um, there's a, a guy, his name's Paul. He, he has an account on Instagram called Canadian Woodworks. So I don't know if you're familiar with them or not, but I, I partnered up with them and I built my wife a rocking chair for our second year wedding anniversary, I think. Oh, amazing. And it was my favorite build. I think we have a picture of it here. There we go. Oh, that is gorgeous, man. Wow, yeah. that is beautiful. Yeah. So my yeah. wife just uh, shot me three fingers up. She said it's for our third year anniversary. So I was, I was, <laughs> you're you're yeah. in trouble now. You're in trouble. Yeah, that was a test, honey. So good job. <laughs> you passed the test. Uh, for everyone watching, that was a test. Right. Uh, yeah. Um, what uh, You know, there's a guy, I, I believe he's out of Canada. Uh, his name is, um, I follow him on Instagram, Garrowood. Do you know him? Oh, know him? yeah. He's out of Alberta. He's yes. He actually, so. Funny enough, Garrowood actually started working with Paul from Canadian Woodworks. He built okay. his first rocking chair with him, and now he does like incredible work on yeah, rocking the, chairs. Yeah, the the, uh, the Maloof joints. Um, yeah, Sam yeah, Maloof. There's, there's a couple guys in in LA, and I meant to take the class, but then COVID happened. There was uh, classes on on the Maloof joint um, taught mm -hmm. by uh, some of his one of his apprentices, I think, that ended up uh, in the LA area. So yeah, but he does yeah. amazing work, and that rocking yeah. chair is amazing, man. You should be very very proud. Thank you. It's, um, you know, it took about a hundred hours to put together. And I remember Paul saying to me, uh, by the way, if, if I wasn't working with Paul who had every template and every jig you could imagine for this build, this right. would have taken me 200 hours plus, but you know, lucky enough to have good people like him in the industry, uh, yeah. to help, help lend a hand. Um, but for anyone who doesn't know what we're talking about, Sam Maloof joints, the rocking chairs, I, I highly encourage you to head over to Instagram or Google uh, check out Canadian Woodworks, Gara Wood, Sam Maloof. Uh, there's the, these incredible, talented woodworkers that have really changed the game for you know woodworkers like myself and Darren. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Really inspiring stuff. Yeah. Now, um, something I want to talk about because I, I think this will be an interesting topic for both you and I is misconceptions of television reno shows. <laughs> sure, um, right. Everyone I, I've had, when I was in school for carpentry, I went to uh, George Brown College um, to learn about carpentry. And I remember one of the teachers was there and he's saying, you know, I'm sick and tired of these shows, making it seem like you can do a home reno and renovate an entire house in 30 minutes. And I actually, I had to stand up and, well, I didn't stand up, but I said, <laughs> you realize that this is a television show, right? Like nobody, yeah. we don't advertise and say that this is, done in 30 minutes. I think most people can put it together that it's, you know, takes a bit longer than that. 
Right, right. Yeah, of course. Um, you know, I will say though, however, with with uh, Extreme Makeover Home Edition, there there is a little magic to that. Uh, we did build the houses in in five days, which was unbelievable to watch. Now, I'll preface that with we had 500 volunteers and 500 skilled tradesmen on top of each other at once. So yeah, it was um, it was pretty impressive to watch. You know, um, I've done remodels and and uh, worked for as I said at GC and. You know, there's always that, um, you know, crews sometimes, you know, they're when they when they land on top of each other, there's there's can always be some friction. And yes. uh, so it was it was really amazing to watch, uh, you know, in the spirit of giving back, all these guys work together like a well-oiled machine on top of each other. You know, the framers, the electricians, the plumbers, they're all working together. So, yeah. And I think you actually worked with the same crew I worked with on Home Free. We did a show years ago. Um and we worked with a crew because same similar style where we did a house a week. Yeah. And like you said, there's just so many people on site. But I mean, maybe we'll talk after and name yeah. drop because because now it, it maybe I don't think people will be interested in hearing that. But yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah. it does get crazy, like you said, when people are tripping over each other, working around the clock. Um yeah. what did you find getting into the television business and doing construction? What was your your biggest min- misconception? Um, gosh, um, I think, you know, I think there's such a deep, um, well of artists behind you, um, Mm -hmm. you know, that are there to kind of aid you through it. Um, so, you know, I, I really thought at least walking to, um, into extreme that I was going to have to build a house by myself in five days. (laughs) So, So I was very happy that there were other people that, that, uh, were there. Um, yeah 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 so that's a big uh, support group yes yeah so that was that was that was pretty awesome and also you know just the camaraderie i you know i think that when i was a teenager and i worked for a gc that was what i really loved about being on a job site was was all the different characters that existed on the job site and getting to know each one of them um as you know you know uh these guys that are lifers you know that are that are plumbers and electricians and you know, yada, yada, yada. They're just, they're just great, great people. Um, yeah. full, of, full of stories. And, you know, some of them missing a couple fingers, you know, but yeah, <laughs> part of it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I've definitely run into a few of those and you're yeah. right. There's a lot of stories. Yeah. Um, I, I found for myself, I always, so when I started working in, I'll say construction, I worked for my dad yeah. and this was during homes on homes. I'm not sure if you're familiar with any of the shows, but, yeah. um, I worked for him and I was all about the construction and I always thought, you know, I'll, I, I'm not interested in TV. And I think my biggest misconception was like how much the two, the the tie together, how difficult that is. Because when I did make that transition in my early twenties and started doing more television, man, it was like, you know, trying to juggle the two, it's a lot of work. Like people think people watch the shows and, and, and think that it's so easy and, yeah. you know, hosting alone is tough, but then also renovating a home. Yeah. You know, that, that was a skill that I, that I had to learn. I'm, I'm not even sure that I've mastered, um, which, you know, is, um, you know, it's, as you know, if you're in the wood shop and you're building something, you know how to build it. Now yeah. describing that to someone while you're building it, that's a whole different, that's yeah. like, you know, that's like doing one of these things. You know yeah, it's, exactly. It's, you, you did um, a good job. Right. So it's, yeah. uh, you know, it's, it's, um, it's a skill that you have to pick up. And uh, that, that was definitely um, a learning curve for me. I think, you know, especially in the first episode of Extreme, I was definitely white knuckling it. Um, but, uh, but after that, it was, it was great. And, you know, we, we had such a great time. Yeah, uh, it's great. It was a great show. Uh, I thought you did a great job on it. And uh, Jesse Tyler Ferguson, obviously, he's awesome. And, and uh, is it Bre- Bregan? Yeah, Bregan Jane. Bregan, and- yeah. Harry Lachlan. Yeah. Yeah. They're very talented designer. So I started, I've been following the crew and, and catching up. Um, but if anyone hasn't watched the show, you should catch it. I'm sure it lives somewhere on HGUS uh, online. It does. It's on, um, it's on the go. It's on the HGTV uh, go app right now. Oh, there you go. Yeah. So. All right. Fun. And if anyone has any questions, I think now's a good time, you know, write a question for us, myself or Darren, and we'll, we'd be happy, we'd be happy to answer it. Um, but Darren, what are you currently working on? Well, um, I'm, I'm going to be working for a GC here in uh, Charleston. Um, and, uh, you know, like I said, he specializes in the um, century home. So 
really, really excited about that. Um, I'll probably be launching a, um, a YouTube channel soon. Um, sawdust for breakfast. It's a little Ooh, fun. that's my fun, favorite, uh, uh, favorite thing for breakfast. Right. Um, yeah. And, um, what else? What else? Uh, I've got a couple other little irons in the fire. Or what is that? Pans in the fire? I don't know what that. I think it's irons in the fire. It's irons in the fire. I got some. Yeah. You, so yeah. I'll, uh, I'll that's awesome, posted. man. Yeah. All right. So Mark has a question here. We live in Los Angeles and have two dogs that love to run around the pool when we swim. The deck is concrete and it burns their paws. Is there anything that we can lay down to protect their paws from the extreme heat? Hmm. Now, I'm not from LA, um, but I know there are, for instance, there's cork products that you can actually place on concrete, which cork won't absorb the heat quite as much as uh, concrete or asphalt would. But maybe a product like that again i don't live in la so i'm not sure what's available there um but do you have any any thoughts on that darren yeah i would say the same thing and or um i, I don't know what the landscape looks like you know uh landscaping looks like but uh, mm -hmm. possibly turf you know some sort of a turf um yeah if you can bring that up to the you know cl somewhat close to the edge of the pool i mean obviously not on top of it but um you know might give the dogs a little bit of relief yeah yeah i know my dad's put um a rubber membrane around his pool and oh look at that my my wife my wife coming you were right honey the rocking chair was your second wedding anniversary present oh. to me not the third well there you I go i was right it was like a there test within a test <laughs> <laughs> uh well thank you so much for joining us darren uh, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you getting to know you better and uh hopefully i can meet you in person maybe do some stuff on on youtube and who knows maybe on hey, hg man. I would love that. I mean, the work you're doing, man, count me in. Yeah, right back at you. All right, brother. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. And thanks again for joining. Again, uh, for anyone that has missed the show, you can check it out online. And that is uh, Extreme Makeover Home Edition. Always got to make sure I say that properly. I still have to make sure I say it properly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks again, man. All and right, brother. For anyone who has any comments, questions, please write in the comments. Uh, I know I'll be on after trying to answer any of those questions or comments. And Darren, I'm not sure if you'll be on there as well. Um, but you know, you can also reach us on Instagram at Darren Keefe or at Mike Holmes Jr. and ask us questions there or follow us and just see what we're up to. Yeah, perfect. Okay.